Hello everyone, Daryl here with some kind of a dark machined object. You can barely even tell it, but at the right angle with the light dancing around on the surface, you can see the concentric uh, rings, the, the textures from the turning that uh, give it a really nice finish as a result. And although it's a somewhat matte finish, you can, you can also tell it's quite reflective. And, you know, if I didn't know better, I'd think, okay, I'm looking at a piece of aluminum that's been machined and black anodized. Sure doesn't sound like aluminum, though, does it? And, in fact, it's not. This is the black Delrin 6-inch inner diameter spin base from Dave Kimner and Kimner Design. It is designed to accommodate the six inch diameter BK7 borosilicate glass lens from Andre Dutois. The inner wall height being just right to accept the lens and give you the edge protection a top would need when spinning on that glass lens, keeping it from Obviously, I mean, it's with that thick wall around the lens, you're going to retain the top and it, it will not drop over the edge. But if you're spinning a lens, spinning a lens, if you're spinning a top and it drifts over to the edge and falls off, right there is some potential damage. Uh, depending on the top material, that that edge of the glass, even though it's been ground and polished to some extent, it still runs the risk of potentially scratching, especially some of the more, uh, on this, some of the less durable metal finishes. Exotic metals, you know, the anodized finishes, sometimes they mark up, scuff up fairly easily. And uh, aluminum, relatively soft and think about it spinning, it's probably going to get scratched on that. So you get that kind of protection from this spin base. Now, that's not unique. I mean, any spin base that would fully house the lens will give you that protection. Uh, this one, though, is also smartly designed with a sloping wall that slopes away from the center as it rises up. So that gives you maybe another quarter inch or third of an inch of uh, workable surface area in each direction the top goes before the top actually runs into the wall. So it maximizes the usability of your lens that you place into it. Now I think I've got this positioned on the deep side of the lens up. So let's find out. This is uh, Dave's Dynamo. It's a tungsten aluminum top. And indeed, it's not drifting quite so much had I had the lens on the wrong side. So this is for the Andre lens, which has two different focal lengths on opposing sides. This is the longer focal length, hence, uh, I'm sorry, this is the shorter focal length and hence deeper concavity side. Um, the spin base is $75 and with the lens it brings it up to $115, which is a great price. I, I can't recommend enough that if you're in need of a spin base, this is an excellent way to go where you get a top-notch quality premium glass borosilicate lens that if you bought it directly from Andre in Hong Kong and had him ship it to you in the, in the U.S., I don't know about other countries, but at least Hong Kong to U.S. shipping of a single lens, this runs, I think, about $82. So for less than half that amount, for $40 you're getting an excellent lens uh, from Dave Kimner here in the USA. And uh, I'm sure he's taking advantage of some volume quantity purchases from Andre for the lens 
and just passing it along to us as his customers. And uh, it's just, it's an unbeatable deal in my opinion. Now, what's also nice about it, a lot of times you have premium glass like this and if you're spinning a big top like this plier, you're thinking, well, I don't want to risk, you know, what if I accidentally dropped it, you know? That, that's a heavy top that weighs almost, uh, it's about uh, 400 grams, I think. So it could pretty easily crack that lens if I dropped it carelessly. So you're thinking, no, I'd rather have a less expensive surface to spin on. And as it turns out, a very popular lens that we've all probably used, or many of us, uh, is a six inch diameter framed five inch mirror with 3x magnification that you can buy from Walmart. It comes with a folding metal stand it's attached to, it's very easily removed. And as you see, it just drops into place perfectly. I, th I think it, it doesn't even have any rattle. So that's, that's about as good a fit as you could expect while still being very easy to tip the stage over and pop that mirror out. With the Andre lenses, they vary in their uh, diameter a little bit. Uh, that's not uncommon for uh, lenses from these various optical glass factories to have probably plus or minus a, a millimeter size variation. And in that case, it's real easy to shim up the lens if you so choose, so it doesn't jiggle in the frame. But I don't really see that as necessary. It's just an option. In any case, um, as you can see, the, this mirror works great. And the thing I like about mirrors for photography and videography is that they give you a way to see the bottom side of the top as well as the up, upper side. However, and this was uh, an idea I presented to Dave, nice though it is to see the reflection, it would be nice to have a little more relief where the top is uh, further raised up and you could see under it even better. So I had an idea. I mentioned it to Dave and he's like, sure, I can take care of that for you. So for a very reasonable surcharge, this is what we have. The same stage with a five inch diameter cut out in the bottom, making it, making it into a portal for all practical purposes with a half inch lip surrounding it that still gives plenty good support for the Andre lens. You'll also see I've got a, a, rubber, a rubber band around it. And the reason for that, let me just straighten it up a little bit because I've bumped it out of place here. This is a rubber band I ordered from Amazon. It's called, uh, let me read it here, Graffiti Band Joes. Um, very nice quality rubber bands. I buy them in a package of various sizes because they're useful for a whole lot more than spin stages. And uh, in the case of this spin stage though, some of you may have seen comments or videos from me in the past where I talk about using a mirror, a large concave mirror, as a leveling stage for your, uh, for your spin stage. So as an example here, here's one still with the mirror in it. By, by scooting the spin stage around on that concave mirror, you get a very shallow but nonetheless infinitely variable control over the level of that stage and can adjust it to center your top up so that it spins almost dead center. With a larger mirror, you would have even greater control because clearly you could shift the stage further. And I do have a larger mirror, but this one's sufficient for illustrating what I'm talking about. But as you can see, it, that, that Delrin, it's, it's not slippery, but it, it still slides just enough that the solution for that 
is the rubber ring. So I now have just enough of it underlapping the bottom edge of the spin stage so that I can very easily just move it a little and level that Andre lens and spin stage before I spin my tops. Now here's a top I recently got from Samuel Links, beautiful semiconductor over Mokume top. And as you can see, I now have enough relief between the mirror face and the top that I can fully see the top's bottom side, especially if I were to move the camera where the video is shooting more directly down into the mirror. So I really, really like this. It just makes uh, such over under, as I call it, photography that much easier. And as you saw, I mean, I did buy a, a solid base stage from Dave. I can take that base And first off, you've, you've now got two, two easily usable spin stages, but one can be placed on top of the other for the same result. The only difference being I, I've got even greater clearance, greater relief, uh, because the height of the lower base relative to the mirror surface is higher than what that 8x mirror was providing so with this other stage above it I've probably got nearly an inch of space underneath the uh, Andre lens to give an even better view of a top here's a uh, built Spenzino not a whole lot of difference there uh, compared to the 8x mirror and another thing just to point out is depending upon the magnification of the mirror that you use, that effect's going to vary a little bit. So this 3X mirror doesn't give us quite the magnification of the 8X. And as a result, I would say things look almost one-to-one -one in size for the uh, apparent size of the top from the top view, the upper view as to the lower view reflected off the mirror. So there you have it. Um, and, uh, one, one more thing I'll point out. This is just for grins. I mean, if you want to have a little fun and you've got a top with a low enough profile to accommodate it, as I said, there's probably about one inch of clearance maybe between these two stages. So there is a Griffin Mini Q. <laughs> now, within the same spin space, we can spin two tops. <laughs> Just kind of having some fun. But there you have it the Ken Kimner design. Delrin spin stage with Andre lens and uh, it's really great work Dave thank you